What's your name and what agency do you work for? My name is Scott Fearing. I'm the Executive Director for the Gay Alliance of the Genesee Valley, located in Rochester, New York. Do you think that there is an issue in Monroe County regarding homelessness, LGBTQ youth? Uh, there's a big issue here, and I think primarily it's because um, Rochester is known as sort of a mecca. Mm -hmm. And so for a large part of not only western New York, but even down into Pennsylvania, and sometimes even up into Canada, if there's a kid in a small town who doesn't feel safe, is looking to come out, a little bit of searching online, and he finds Rochester, and he ends up here. And oftentimes that's how we have people knocking on our door saying, you know, I was kicked out of my house, I ran away from home, I'm looking for resources, I've heard Rochester is a good place to be. And so um, we've been developed a really nice network of services available to help kids who are, who are homeless or living on the streets. And uh, so I guess the answer is, yeah, I think Monroe County has a big issue. What help does your organization provide to gay youth? Well, we have a number of different services. Primarily, especially if they're homeless, what we do is help provide them with links to other service providers. So Center for Youth has been really great here in Rochester as far as helping LGBT uh, and Q individuals, and so we help connect them with resources. More broadly, our youth services are really pretty varied. Um, we have a library, um, so a lot of people do stop in and either check out books and or DVDs. We have youth programming that we partner with other organizations in town to provide and we're constantly bringing new services into play. We also do a lot of special events. So at the holiday season we have a holiday dance every year and our probably the most popular dance we provide is in the spring we do something we call the Big Gay Prom. Uh, in 2016 it will be our 12th year of providing uh, the Big Prom mm -hmm. and um, so it's always a really fun event for folks to come together. Have you ever been homeless yourself? I've never been homeless here in the States. I've been really blessed. I did, as a 20-year-old, spend six months living in Europe, and there was a period of about three weeks where I had run out of money. Um, I didn't have any other resources, and I had to rely on really the kindness of strangers and figuring out where to find food on the street. So that's the closest, and it's a very different situation, I realize. Um, but it did give me some real insight of what it means to, to sleep under bushes and under highways and to not have a place to go to to call home or to get warm. What advice would you have for an LGBTQ youth who is coming out? Boy, the advice I have for anybody who's in the process of coming out is to give themselves permission to make mistakes, to ask questions, and to be as honest with themselves and others as they can be, and not to always um, assume ill will on the part of others. So one of the things I see oftentimes is a young person coming out to their parents. The parents aren't expecting the news, and the kid wants mom and dad to understand right now, today, and get they get mad when mom and dad are like, whoa, hey, wait a minute, I don't get it. And so I always try to remind kids, is give mom and dad a chance to catch up to where you're at. You know, you maybe have had 13, 14, 20 years to figure out that your identity, and you suddenly want to give mom and dad like an hour to accept it. They need some time to get there too. So one of my, my big pieces of advice is always be gentle on yourself and others as you are working through this process and bringing other people into your life. Because in the long run, um, even somebody who may initially be really oppositional may come around. Now at the same time, if it's not a safe situation, um, have backup. Be ready for a, a place that you can go, have a friend that you can give a call to and say, look, it's going really bad here, mom and dad, don't get it, and you know, dad's threatening me. Have a place that you can go to to be safe. Uh, and if you don't have a friend that you can turn to, uh, again, look for a resource in your town, or if worse comes to worse, call the cops and just say, I'm not safe here in my house, I need to get out of here. And they will usually help you. Um, I wish I could say always, but I have heard some times when the police haven't acted real well either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's best to have some a fallback in mind if things do go poorly. What advice do you have for LGBTQ youth who are currently homeless? Find whatever resources you can. Um, again, continue to believe in yourself. Realize that um, you may need to uh, make some tough decisions as far as uh, where you can turn for help. Uh, what kind of assistance is available, but trust in yourself. 
and and keep shooting for better than than where you're at and realize you can do it and if somebody does offer you a hand up or a hand out or some assistance don't take it for granted um, show some appreciation mm -hmm. as well as some gratitude and take take that little step that to, that they may be providing you to go forward and not to go backwards or stay where you're at. Thank you. My name is Jessica Cohen and I work at Trillium Health. Do you think that there is an issue in Monroe County regarding homelessness, LGBTQ youth? Absolutely there is an issue regarding homelessness, um, specifically regarding LGBTQ youth. Um, Previously, before I worked at Trillium Health, I worked as an emergency counselor at the Center for Youth, and before that, I was the director of youth services at the Gay Alliance. So I've worked with um, gender expansive and um, sexual minority youth for a while. And my experience is that there is a higher incidence of homelessness um, among LGBTQ youth than their straight counterparts. However, it's not always documented in the ways that we would think it would be. So for example, um, those young people may not be engaged necessarily in foster care or what we would think of as classic homelessness. They're more likely to be like couch surfing, living with friends. Um, I don't like to use the term getting kicked out of houses because I don't think that's the reality of what's happening. I think that um, many times lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender youth um, their lives are made so miserable by their parents um, that they run away or leave and then, you know, whether they end up at a shelter or um, somewhere else, they'll get a phone call and they'll say, the parents will say, oh no, no, they can come back. Um, so they aren't able to get engaged in different services because the parents aren't officially saying that their kids aren't allowed at the house, um, but they make it so miserable for them there that the kid doesn't want to stay. What help does your organization provide to these youth? Um, Trillium Health has a variety of services. Um, our legacy agency is AIDS Care, and before that, um, AIDS Rochester and Community Health Network merged to become AIDS Care. So while our history is with HIV and AIDS, um, we've expanded to include comprehensive services um, for medical, um, social, and other wellness services. I work in the LGBT um, health team through community health initiatives, and my specialty is youth. And while we don't provide currently primary care um, for youth, we'll be expanding for pediatrics in the future. Um, right now, our main service that we provide for youth is through the Quest program, which is Queer Education and Support for Teens. And what that program does is it offers um, social programming, educational and leadership programming for youth. So there's different events throughout the year um, that they can participate in. So for example, we'll be doing the Day of Silence, which happens in April of every year. And it's just an opportunity for youth to come together and dance. And um, we'll have some youth performers and drag queen performers and drag king performers. And it's crazy and they love it. <laughs> um, also, we have... Um, in the past year, we have begun to offer um, groups for gender expansive children and teens um, in partnership with a local psychologist who works with gender expansive youth, Dr. Emma Forbes Jones. And while she meets with the parents and provides support, um, Trillium staff um, sort of run play groups and do crafts and um, help facilitate conversation among teens. And it's awesome and crazy at the same time because I don't know if you've taken care of, <laughs> if you've watched children who are in between the ages of 4 and 12 at the same time, but it can be a challenge. <laughs> I love teenagers very much. Children are wonderful too, but I was very tired. <laughs> um, we also offer, um, because we're funded by um, the New York State Department of Health and Human Services through the AIDS Institute, um, we also offer free consultation, trainings, workshops, education to service providers, um, schools, educators, youth serving professionals. Um, so we actually go out, do trainings, um, and support schools individually. So for example, in the Rochester City School Districts, there's a bunch of schools. 
And we can't just give them a cookie cutter training because all the schools are at different places. So whether it's um, a training they need or a consultation because a transgender kid is coming out and they need help to navigate that process, we can be there to help them navigate that process. Um, we can also help and assist with um, creating and maintaining school diversity clubs such as gay straight alliances um, or pride alliances and sort of anything that you might think that is related to supporting LGBT youth and families. Have you ever been homeless yourself? I am very lucky that I have never been homeless. Um, while I identify as a lesbian, I have a lot of privilege related to um, my identity. I grew up in middle class, predominantly white suburbs. Um, and you know what? Even though I've never experienced homelessness, the coming out process is really hard, and understanding that it was a hard process for me with all of my privilege um, helps me to understand how much and harder it is for youth who don't have the same access of privilege. You know, I lived with my parents until I was like 23, and, and they're great, right? So for young people who don't have parent support, who may need to support themselves, or who are trying to go to school, you know, I had my parents' support all the way through school. They funded my meal plan. You know, I have student loans to pay back, but in the moment, I didn't have to worry about, like, holding jobs or how to navigate um, an application. So um, I feel very lucky that I didn't have to experience that. What advice would you have for an LGBTQ youth who is coming out? Um, I think that... The best advice for an LGBTQ youth coming out is, gosh, is it cliche to say hang in there? No. <laughs> that it'll pass. <laughs> um, I don't want to say it's going to get better because it might suck for a little while. Um, I think you have to be honest about that, um, that the process is not always easy, that finding a supportive adult, um, and you may not convince your parents to be supportive. I think that's unrealistic. Um, of course, we would like all parents to be supportive, um, but it's a process for everybody. If you can find a supportive adult, whether it's at school, um, the Center for Youth, um, foster care, they can help you in ways um, that you might, and in getting access to things you might not otherwise know about. Um, adults have a lot of privilege that young people don't have and are able to navigate services and sort of, you know, get you connected. Uh, I think that's really important to feel connected um, when you're coming out because you can feel alone. Um, it's an exciting time, but it's also, I think, the scariest time for many young people. Um, and if you want to wear rainbows, wear rainbows. What advice do you have for LGBTQ youth who are currently homeless? Uh, for LGBTQ youth who are currently homeless, I think that um, there's a differentiation between um, minors who are currently homeless, so people under the age of 18, and those who are um, young adults. I happen to think that adolescence um, does not end at 18. Um, people really continue to grow, I think, and navigate that through 22, maybe even up to 25. Um, if you are under the age of 18 and you find yourself homeless, um, you can find a safe place through the Safe Place program. Any city bus is a safe space. You can say that you just need a safe place, they'll get you connected, you don't need a bus token. I think all the tops are also safe places. Um, find yourself to the Center for Youth. So there are lots of services for young people who might find themselves homeless under the age of 18. If you're a young adult over the age of 18, um, my advice is continue to get yourself connected, I guess. Um, <laughs> so. I think the community of LGBT people can be very supportive. So whether that's through um, the Center for Youth, who does provide services through age 21, just not necessarily shelter, um, or a community group. So whether it's Trillium Health, we can we also have housing um, teams. So we have care management services for um, for our patients that can help you with all sort of navigate all that kind of stuff. So if you need help filling out DHS applications, or you need help filling out job applications, um, or you need help finding shelter, that's something that Trillium Health can offer, um, in addition to primary care and transgender health care. Um, so I think getting connected with an agency like that, or the Gay Alliance, or Center for Youth, or the MOCA Center is excellent, um, can really make a difference in how you're able to move forward. 
um, not feeling alone, I think, is the best place to be. So I think getting connected with organizations, meeting people, um, so that you can make friends, sort of create your own family. Um, yeah. If a parent is having a hard time accepting their child's sexual orientation or gender identity, what services are available? Uh, there's a variety of services available for parents um, or caregivers or guardians or family members. Uh, I think PFLAG is the first one that comes to mind. We have a chapter in Rochester that sort of goes up and down as parents um, uh, need support. There's also a adult, there's a group for parents of transgender children. Um, there are actually several groups for parents of transgender children. Um, the Trillium Health is a great resource, the Gay Alliance is a great resource, the MOCA Center is a great resource. If you don't feel like you're ready to contact one of those um, organizations, I also think reaching out to um, places that you find to be helpful. So if you're having a hard time um, navigating spiritually, reach out to your church. There are many affirming congregations um, in Rochester that offer um, LGBT affirming services, I guess would be the word. Um, so I think that's helpful. Um, what else? I think also it's okay to have a hard time with it. I think many parents sort of feel caught off guard or not really sure what to do with that information when a child comes out, you know, whether they're 5 or 15 or, you know, 25. I think it can be a difficult process and oftentimes the young person who is coming out has already been like coping with those feelings um, and that identity for a long time even though they may have just come out to you. So it's okay to also take time to um, learn um, and move forward and accept your child. Um, I think it's most important to love your kid through it um, and love is about talking and communication and learning together. Um, I think that there is a difference between um, accepting somebody's orientation and affirming. And if you're not at a place where that you can accept, um, you can be affirming. And what that looks like is um, if you have a transgender child using um, the pronouns of the identity that they um, identify as. So if you have um, a child who was assigned male at birth and who came out to you as a female, you know, being affirming is using those pronouns, even though it might be really hard for you. Um, it's having conversations um, and talking about things that you don't understand and seeking the support of therapists and counselors. Uh, there is a great adolescent um, medicine clinic at Strong for gender expansive children and adolescents, um, as well as many therapists in the area who specialize in this. Um, that can do therapy for you, for your child, um, for your family as a whole. I think, you know, keeping honest communication, honest loving <laughs> communication is really important um, for families to stay together and move forward during this process.